is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back to make more bad financial decisions today. We're over here at kind of a holding lot at David Stanley Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Midwest City. Shalante's out here helping me. He's usually the guy that I end up buying cars from. It's either him or it's Caleb. But I got to show you guys something. I bought a Toyota Tacoma for my fian for my fiance, and she didn't care for it. It's a 2020. I think it's 2020 or 2021. We've had it literally a month. Some of you have seen it in my post. You've been asking me about it. And well, I didn't do a video on it because it really was for her. It wasn't content for the channel. It was something for her. She hates it. Uh, I hate it too. It's got no guts. It's slow as molasses and it's a V6. It's an SR5 and we really don't like it. Well, I came over to David Stanley today to see if I could find a Rebel. I thought maybe she'd really like a Rebel. And she told me, get rid of it. Well, I came over here and the Rebel that I wanted to look at was sold. As it happens so many times, cars fly off the shelves like this, right? Kind of like houses. It's a crazy market these days. Well, when I got here, they said, you know what? We don't have a Rebel, but we have something we think you're gonna like even better. How about a 75th anniversary power wagon? And here it is. It is used, admittedly, it's used. It was just traded in half an hour ago. It's not up for sale. It's not on the website. It hasn't it hasn't been detailed. Nothing. This just got traded in on something else. I don't even know what year it is. I saw it and I think it's called Atomic Orange. And I said, I gotta, I gotta have this. I gotta have this. This thing is ridiculous. 6.4 scat pack engine on a three quarter ton chassis with basically like a Laramie package, like my last uh, Longhorn Laramie Limited. Very, very nice truck. Tuned suspension, of course. It's got the Bilstein sh monotube shocks. She is a beautiful truck. And I know on camera, it might come out looking kind of red, but it's not, I assure you. This is very, very orange. This is like Dukes of Hazard type orange she's got the projector lights leds even a winch on the front right here a what is that a worn winch with synthetic rope yeah it's got the cab over lights or clearance lights whatever you want to call them goodyear wrangler all-terrain tire she's got the leather she's got the big screen she's got the subwoofer she's got everything the only thing it doesn't have is a detail I'm not concerned with that because this truck would probably fly off the dealership floor as soon as it was listed for sale. As soon as it goes up for sale, I can guarantee this thing will be gone. So I am really, really excited. It's got some weird stationary running boards that you got to really, I don't know what the purpose of those are. I would say you don't even need running boards, but there you go. Running board. Climb up in here. She's got 11,000 miles on the odometer. Like I said, she's got the big screen. She's got all the goodies, man. You got all the stuff. You got USB-C, USB-A. You've got your 110 power outlet down there. Cup holders. Again, it's dirty. Like I said, it's not detailed. But they were like, man, if you just really want like a 2500 but a sportier version, they're like, this is what you need. Of course, look at this sway bar. Four-wheel drive, four-low axle unlock, front, rear. Guys, you can control everything. And on the other side, it's got a badge. We got to read it because I, I don't know what it says. I don't even know how much this truck is yet, and I'm already super excited. The bed has been used, so it's a little scraped up. I'm not overly concerned with all that. That's what bed liners are for, and put a, a bed cover over it. You'd be good to go. It's got some light scratches here and there in the paint. You know, it's, again, a used truck. I think the Autospot LLC could do a hell of a job making this look a lot better. All right, it says Power Wagon, model DJ7X91, 410 horsepower, 429 pound-feet of torque, and let's see, gross vehicle weight rating, 8,565 pounds, and gross combined weight of 18,000 pounds, build number 0513. Still got the books? It does. Heck, it's got the window sticker. Let's see how much this thing cost when it was new. I'm curious. Total price, 68.7. It's a 2021 with 12,000 miles on it. I can do this. I can do this. See if they can make me a deal. They can make me a deal, man. We can work out a deal on this. 
I will be so, so happy. And I know everybody's wondering, am I gonna be picking up that new Ram, that new 2500, the $72,000 truck that I ordered? Well, I just got through talking to him. There is still no update on it. Um, it's not being built. It's been almost three months and we don't know what's going on. So I figure in the meantime, maybe this would do everything I needed to do. And if my truck ever shows up, then yes, maybe I'll go ahead and take possession of it. And if it doesn't, well, I don't know. I think I could live with this, guys. <laughs> what do you think? I think I could live with this. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I could live with the power wagon, man. She's a, she's a beast. She's a beast. We'll find out what the price is on it, what they're gonna work out for me here. And hopefully we can walk out of here with this and they can keep that dadgum uh, Toyota Tacoma. The funny thing is, is I am, the engine is still hot from it being traded. Like this was just traded in and brought over here to the bullpen. Guys, tomorrow I am supposed to go pick up a 2020 Nissan Titan Pro 4X from Carvana in Oklahoma City. Like I am scheduled to pick that up tomorrow at 1 p.m. And I figured, man, I just want to stop by David Stanley and see if they have something before I go do the deal with Carvana tomorrow. And sure enough, they had just sold what I wanted, but they had something that I didn't even know I wanted. I had no idea. This wasn't here. This didn't exist. It's not on their website. I didn't even know I wanted one of these until I saw it. And I'm telling you, the minute I put eyes on this thing, I fell in love. The color, man, the orange and black. Oh man, I like this guys. I like this a lot. What do you think? What do you think of the power wagon? I wonder if it's got an exhaust. It doesn't look like it. Dang it. Oh, it'd be nice if somebody already spent the money and did all that for us, you know? So we don't have to, let's climb under it. Take a look. Oh, oh, oh wow, that's a big drive shaft. Good Lord. It's even got, it's even got Bilstein shocks on the axle itself. The dampener for the axle uses Bilstein monotube shocks. She's a big girl. Good gosh, she's big. Yeah, I like this, guys. I like this. Don't, don't tell them, though. I don't want them to know that I'm this excited. They're going to try to rake me over the coals on it. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There's the uh, control for the winch. Hopefully, it's in the truck somewhere. If not, I suppose you can buy one, but that's nice. Everything is right up here, easy to get to for that winch. This is, uh, it's nice. I like this. Wow, okay. All right, an electric, who's ever heard of that? I didn't know that existed. It has an electronically controlled sway bar. What? What the hell does that even do? I don't know. I don't know. Guys, let's get the keys for this real quick. And why don't we go take her out on a quick test drive before I sign my John Hancock on the dotted line. All right, guys, before we get out of here and go test drive this, we got Shalante. This is the guy hooking us up. He's going to give us a great deal because Caleb over here, I'm paying him $1,000 to negotiate his deal down, right? I'm gonna do it. No, do it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We can't. That'd be. I'm sure that's a conflict of interest somewhere. Oh, yeah, I'd get fired. Yeah. You'd get fired no. And I'd get my new truck. Yeah. Everybody's happy. Exactly. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, so we got Shalante over here. We got Caleb. And Caleb, he's got a he's got a YouTube channel, guys. I do. What is it? It's Forsyth Adventures. Forsyth Adventures. Yep. I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to drop a link. Yep. First link below this video. I've got two videos. Now. If they sell me this truck and give me a decent deal on the Tacoma, then no, I'm kidding. I'll do it anyway. No, I'll do it I, anyway. I I'll do it anyway. Let's I'm going to put a link. When I saw your intro, dude, I was like, I mean, when I say fire, I mean, literally, the intro was fire because you come out with a what, AR-15? Yeah, it's got a, uh, <laughs> it's got a, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, AR, my bike, and then just fishing, really, that's what we're all going to be doing, just a bunch of fun adventures, really. That's well, if you can make videos like that intro, you got to, you, you don't need to work anymore, dude. <laughs> you can just go fishing. Can you imagine getting paid to fish and shoot guns and ride motorcycles all day? That would be my dream. That'd that be a be, dream for me too. Yeah. I'd, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Go check out his channel, yep. Forsyth Adventures, yes, sir. and a link will be below. Go check him out and tell him Randy sent you guys. I'm gonna put yep. a link to his video. Go subscribe to his channel. Let's. How many subscribers you got right now? 100? 70 right now. 70, you're almost to 100. Yep. 
I wonder if we could get you to 500. That would be awesome. My goal is 1,000 by December. 1,000 by December. I bet we can get you. I bet. I bet you guys give him to 500. In fact, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do one even better. If we can get him to 500, I'm going to pick one of you that subscribed to his channel. I'm going to send you 100 bucks. Sweet. 100 bucks. I'll cash app it to I'll you. I'll double it. You'll double it. I'll, I'll give it. You'll the double same it. Person, a hundred bucks. They'll get two hundred bucks cash. Two hundred dollars. I'll double it. Cash app. I'll, I'll cash app. Cash app. Cash app. Venmo. However. Venmo. Yep. Wow. Five hundred bucks. Or five. That's 500 to get you to five hundred subscribers. By when should we say? Well, I don't even know when this video is coming out. <laughs> okay, how, let's do let's do that. But a week within a week. Okay. After this video, whenever this video posts, okay. within a week. I'm 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 good for that. And I'll do one even better. If he gets a thousand. I'll do 200 if you guys get him to 1,000. He'll still send you I'll the... Still, I'll still send the 100. He'll still so send the 100. So you get 300 if within a week he gets to 1,000 subscribers from the day this video was posted. Or you get 200 if we can get him to 500, to 500 subscribers. All awesome. right. Man, Bro. when you you got to start a channel... I've got to start a... Get it going. Channel. You guys got so many cool cars. There's so much stuff that comes through. Surely you could just yeah. get some... I'd be. I wouldn't be selling cars. I'd be. Out, I'd get fired. Because <laughs> I. I mean, it's a. What is it? It's a Shelby Cobra with twenty something thousand miles on it. Two thousand and twelve. Oh my goodness. Garage yeah, I'd get fired. I'd be too busy filming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they ever hiring for somebody to film stuff, let me know, man, and, and then I can put it on my YouTube channel. Yeah. No, yeah. Sure. Guys, we got to get out of here because they're technically closed. Yeah. Um, and we haven't done any paperwork, and yeah. we haven't even test driven this yet. Yeah. So. And I got to run. And back. he's got to go home. His yeah. daughter ended up in the hospital today. Yeah. So, later, guys. All right, man. Take it easy. Sure. All right. Let's uh, let's hop in here and let's just run this around the block real quick. That work. Yeah. All right, all right, guys. First ride in the power wagon. Boy, that Crown Vic. He he thinks he's doing something over there, man. <laughs> he <laughs> that Crown Vic up there is moving. He calls it uh, Icky Vicky. Icky Vicky. Icky Vicky. Icky Vicky. <laughs> he he got some mufflers on that thing. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if you think he'll race. Uh, he probably would, man. <laughs> <laughs> he actually just raced one of the guys that drives a Kia Stinger. Are you serious? Seriously. Did he beat him? I don't know, man. I, I have to ask him, but uh, I'm sure that Stinger got him. I wonder if that's an old cop car. Yeah, speaking of cops, <laughs> we're not going to race, guys. I'm just taking it on a quick test drive around the block. Normally, I'd be like, let's get on the highway. But honestly, we're it, it, they're already they're already closing. So. I ain't trying to take any more time. I have no doubt that with 11,000 miles on it, it's it's fine. It's it, And if it's not, guess what? It's what warranty's for. The one thing I hate is whoever puts this crap all over the dashboards. Oh. Ugh. Hate that greasy stuff. I always take it to my detailer and I have him remove it. He steam, does some kind of steam thing on it and gets it off of there. Well, she runs great. I wonder what the gas mileage is. Probably like 15. I think it's like 15 city, 20 highway. Uh, right around there. Something like that. Depends on how, you know, what you're doing with it, <laughs> Like they, how they you're driving it? Less if you're, if you're pulling, so. Yeah, you know. yeah. Well, the Hummer has been getting me 10, 9 to 11, 3 combined. Now, I haven't been pulling nothing with it. So I figure anything is going to seem like it's great gas mileage uh, <laughs> in comparison to driving that. Yeah. This is nice. Like this. Yeah, this is nice. It pulls good, man. It's got plenty of power. Love the screen. Not going to turn on the radio, but I, I miss that screen. That screen is a blessing. So is their surround view camera. Super nice. Oh, and it's already on my station. How about that? It was meant to be. It was meant to be. All right, guys, I'm going to get back to the dealership, and let's see if we can make a deal, and maybe, just maybe, I, I've even got a, oh, it's not this truck. It's the other truck. I got my, uh, depending on what we do, I do have a pre-approval from Chrysler for 75 So we should be good regardless. Look at this. There's so many options on this, man. Sway bar. What? I didn't even know you could adjust a sway bar. I didn't, I'd have to read up on what all that stuff does. Automatic headlights, of course. Oh, check engine lights on. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I like this, guys. We're going to go back there and see if we can make something work out with this, guys. I like this, and uh, 
boy screw that toyota man i'm sorry to any toyota tacoma owners uh <laughs> no thank you guys this is dedication right here it is it is <laughs> it's 10 18 it's 10 18 at night <laughs> why are you still here uh, is it me well, it's just because we uh, want to make sure you can well take care of Randy, so. Yeah, there's no, there's nobody there locking the door. <laughs> Once we get out of here, we ain't come back in. Yeah. You just bought a brand new house. I did. And I bet you're ready to, to go home. I am, man. Oh, but first, can we take that Hellcat out for a spin? <laughs> if they had locked up the side door, they'd probably it out. So, uh. Oh, did I? I didn't close it. Hey, he's like, yo, y'all are done. Yeah. Y'all are done. <laughs> so does this mean that I bought it? This means you bought it. It's official. So if I don't like it tomorrow, can I bring it back? Uh, no, no, uh -huh. you can't bring it back. You can't bring it back. I signed a document that says I can't bring it back. <laughs> you know we'll take care of it. Yeah, I know. I know. I appreciate it because, you know, I've had so many people asking me to show them the Tacoma. I never showed it. I never did a video on it because this was for my fiance. Oh, okay. So there was no reason to show the truck that wasn't mine to the audience. But since you guys have wanted to see it for so long, there it is. It's a 20, uh, we, 21? Yes. I think it's a 21 Tacoma. It's an SR5, two wheel drive, uh, three something V6, 3.5, I don't know. I don't know and I don't care. It's, it's underpowered, it's slow. Um, it doesn't handle very well, and just in my opinion, it's an absolutely sucky truck. <laughs> well, you guys heard it from, from the best. So. And it's for sale at David Stanley. It's for sale, yeah. <laughs> it's for sale at David Stanley. So <laughs> just come over here and buy it, man. We've oh, only yeah. put like 600 miles on it yeah, in a month. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's decent. It's just, it's nothing like what I'm used to driving. Uh, but again, it was for my fiance, so it doesn't really matter if I like driving it or not. But when she came home and she was, she, she was like, I hate this truck. I hate it, babe. Yeah. And I said, you hate the truck. I said, well, I don't know what to tell you because we already bought it. It's it's done. So anyway, there it is. It's only got 5,000 miles on it. 5,000. Yeah. 5,000 miles on it. And it's a decent looking truck. It's just not what she wants. And to be honest with you, I got to thinking about it. She, she doesn't go very many places unless I'm driving. Oh, wow. So 40 grand is a lot of money to spend on a car for someone who yeah, rather cool. just ride with me. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe the power wagon will be mine. Maybe not. Will I get the new Ram when it finally shows up? I don't know. I don't know. I guess my, my, my subscribers need to comment down below and tell me what you think. Should I get the new Ram and this one too? Or should I just hold on to this one and call it a wrap? Uh, because I think this one's going to cover just about every one of my bases. I, I think this is... I'd like to know how to work that winch. I'll figure that out. So there's got to be there's a connector somewhere. There is a connector. And there's got to be a there's got to be a plug-in thing that goes to it somewhere too. There's a plug-in and there's like a, a small gun with a long wire on it and you plug it in. Is it in the truck? Do you know uh, if it came with it? Uh, Probably not. Probably not. Probably the owner kept it as a souvenir. Let's hope not. <laughs> Well, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I can find one. Yeah. 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 Apparently, that winch is a factory. It is. A factory. It comes with. It. I didn't know that. It's a factory. Yeah. I didn't know. I thought that was something somebody threw in here. That's going to be standard on all power wagons. I had no idea. Uh, so it doesn't look like, of course, over there is. Yeah, it's just sword. a subwoofer. Uh, well, I'll search the truck later. Maybe it's in here somewhere. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But still, I'm excited to get in this thing. And uh, I'm excited to go home. I bet you are too. <laughs> you ready to go home? <laughs> it's late, man. Like, seriously, it is. They close at 8 and it is 1030. So here's what I'm going to do. I got to get some of my stuff out of this truck. Oh, there's nothing under there. Maybe, maybe I don't have anything in this truck. I could have swore that I kept my tow hitch and stuff in here just in case I needed it. But I'm going to get my stuff out of here, guys, and then we will jump in the power wagon and take it on a ride home. 
You don't say. It's, uh, it's uh, Tim. Uh, yeah, that's Tim? It's Tim, yeah. For, that was just in there? Yeah. No kidding. Guy, is yeah. that an SRT8? It is. He's got the, uh, the 6.1 in it. Ooh. Yeah. That sucker sounded mean. All right, guys. All right. Let's, let's get on the road and get home. All right, guys. It's a done deal now. Look at all the... There's just so many buttons. I'm going to have to read up on what all of this does. Um, the truck is filthy. And they felt bad about giving it to me this way. But it was either that or I would have to come back and get it tomorrow. And I don't know about you. <clears throat> but when you just drop... I don't even know if I want to tell you how much this truck was. Let's just say... <laughs> let's just say this truck just hit on 70 grand all right this is a very expensive truck yeah it's worth more than what it costs brand new welcome to today's car market <laughs> it's it's uh it's honestly stupid the way it is um, now they didn't clean this up. This hasn't even been washed. Like they haven't done anything and they really did. They felt bad selling to me, but I was like, man, I want it. You know, I want this truck <laughs> and I want it now. And you know, they sold it to me. They're like, all right. They said, we didn't get a chance to detail it or change the oil or anything. So they told me if I choose to bring it back, they'll be more than happy to take care of making sure it's detailed oil change they'll go through it and uh, give it a good once over make sure it's all ready to go i told him i appreciate it and i might bring it back but let's just be real probably not gonna happen guys i'm probably just gonna drive it get a hold of the auto spa take it over to them let let them do a a good old detail on it and then continue on my way it says the oil change is due Oh, hell, I can't read it, but I think, thank you for your business. Next service is, well, the next oil change is almost due right now. So I probably will bring it back and let them change the oil. Here's what I think we should do, though. We ought to jump on the highway real quick and give her a little gas, get my first impressions on what this thing with a 6.4 feels like. All right, it's time to get on the interstate. Man, I love that screen. And honestly the dash is gorgeous as well this is very much very much like that laramie limited longhorn that i had or longhorn limited laramie there's so many damn names it's hard to remember what everything is it's uh it's a nice one <laughs> it's a nice one all right are we ready all right here we go not yet i'm not flooring it yet hold on i don't want to i'm afraid i'm going to cut this car off so i'm going to let him go you ready? Let's floor it. Damn, son! Woo -hoo. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's not in miles per hour, even though it says miles per hour. That's uh, kilometers per <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness what a beast what a beast this is a big heavy truck and she she goes I don't know I don't know what speed I'm pretty sure the speed limit's like 90 where I'm at here but uh yeah good lord this thing's great <laughs> I think me and this truck I think we're gonna get along just fine. All right, so I gave it a couple days and I wanted to get adjusted to the truck a little bit before I came back and said too much more about it. I wanted to make sure I really liked it. Of course, if I don't, it's too late because I own it, but I decided to just give myself a couple days to play with it and figure some things out, get some of the specs down and, you know, make sure that this is something I really liked. I wanted to compare it also to the Hummer because I know there's gonna be a lot of people saying, you did exactly what you said you didn't want to do and you took out a huge note on a big orange pickup truck that the hummer could have handled everything that you could throw at it just fine and, and in a sense you're right you're right the hummer i can promise you would have no issue towing anything you threw behind it nothing 
There are a couple issues with the Hummer though. Nothing mechanical, nothing crazy, nothing really that's any fault of the Hummers, but the truck just does it better. Number one, the wheelbase plays a huge part in how a vehicle is going to tow. Obviously, the Hummer has a very short wheelbase, while the Ram has a much longer wheelbase. One of the biggest contributing factors to my decision to purchase the truck was the mileage and the lack of warranty. Now, 113, 114,000 miles isn't a ton of miles. It's not a lot of miles, especially for something that was taken care of like this. It doesn't leak anything. It runs and drives absolutely great. So there's no issue there. But my biggest issue is what happens when, not if, when something inevitably, eventually goes wrong with the Hummer. Well, you got to fix it. There's no warranty. You got to pay out of pocket. And if it breaks down on the side of the road, your SOL, imagine being on a trip to California or back from California in the desert, in the middle of nowhere, which is where everything always breaks down, and you're left sitting there needing an engine, a transmission, a transfer case, a supercharger. I don't even want to know what that could add up to be. Granted, it may not break down. Let's be real, it will. Everything breaks down, even newer vehicles can break down but at least with something like this if it breaks down i can call roadside assistance to come get it take us where we need to go and fix the vehicle at no cost to me and i guess for me that right there was enough to sway me to go ahead and take out the note on the truck and abandon the hummer so how is it going to handle as a daily driver and a tow rig? Well, as a daily driver, I've been using it, and I'm here to tell you it does great. It's a very, very capable daily driver. No issues with that at all. At all. Gas mileage, however, is very, very bad. It's right there with the Hummer at 11.4 miles a gallon. So gas mileage is horrible. Next, the exhaust absolutely sucks. Listen to this. You can't hear the damn thing so quiet so i think in the next video of the truck i think we are going to do something to that exhaust i think we're going to go down to performance muffler and have them uh liven this thing up a little bit for us there another thing that i don't like are these side steps or what do they call them? they're like scrapers or whatever you know they're they're there to help protect the truck in case you go over some rocks or something that are too high uh sliders i think is what they call them as much as i like these um, I think I'm going to remove them and I think I'm going to get electric running boards installed that drop down several inches uh, and then they fold up when you close the door so that they're still out of the way. I don't anticipate doing any crazy rock crawling. That's not really my thing. But those steps, like guys, to climb up in this thing, it is, it is, it's a huge, it's a leap, okay? It is a huge leap to get up into this truck and uh that's the biggest complaint i think i my fiance and her son have is getting into this thing also back here these are real bead lockers guys yeah you can actually bead lock these tires you know you may want to do that for people that are going to be doing a lot of rock crawling and stuff this big truck with these big tires if you were to def deflate these wheels or these tires i should say down to like 15 psi or something like jeeps would you're going to find the wheels or tires are going to come right off the beam or the wheels, whatever. But yes, the tires will come off the rim is what I'm trying to tell you. So for that, you would want some actual bead lockers. And this is capable, although it does not have uh, bead lockers in it right now. The winch, it's a 12,000 pound winch. It's a Warren Zion 12S. And this is a $2,000 winch. Unfortunately, it did not come with the deconnected, uh, the deconnector uh, trigger. Uh, it's a synthetic rope, which is really nice. So I had to purchase that separately. I went to Warren's website and I purchased that uh, trigger, that remote control with a 12 foot cord for about $129 shipped. Next, I have purchased a bed liner. I went with the, uh, the rug, bed rug, I think is what they call it. 
The bed rug liner will be a nice, basically carpeted synthetic rug that goes around the whole bed of the truck and the tailgate. Very soft, it's gasoline and oil resistant. You can spray it out and clean it and you're good to go. Then I went with a backflip, I think a ZX4 hard uh, tonneau cover for this as well. You gotta have your bed closed up, man. You gotta be able to lock things up. So I really, I really wanted that. So I, I'm waiting for four wheel parts to get the parts in. We'll get the bed liner installed. We'll get the tonneau cover installed and we'll get the exhaust done. And uh, after that, well, there's really not much more for me to do to the truck other than hopefully just drive it and enjoy it. Now this truck is loaded with options and things that I didn't even realize I missed because it's been so long since I've had them, like the ventilated seats. It may seem like such a small thing, but when you're outside and you're sweating and you're hot and you get in your truck and those seats just blow that ice cold air on you, oh my God, it's a life changing experience. <laughs> I swear to you it is. The truck is phenomenal. I love it. It's doing great so far. We do need to tow with it. So I think in another video, we need to load up the trailer. We need to haul some cars with it and see how it does hauling. I have no doubt that this thing will have zero issue zero issue pulling cars behind it and i wanted to answer i think the biggest question that i saw online which was why did i get a power wagon instead of a trx well the answer to that is simple a trx is like a hundred plus thousand dollars and i didn't want to spend that kind of money but that's not actually true that's i don't want to spend that kind of money on a truck but i would if i thought that it would be a better truck than this. But here's something to remember about the TRX. The TRX has a Hellcat engine, but it's speed limited to like 120 miles an hour or something absolutely whatever, which doesn't make any sense to me. It does because it's a truck and you shouldn't be going that fast in a truck anyway. I mean, really, you shouldn't be going that fast in any car anyway. So I don't know why they limit the truck, but they don't limit the, uh, the cars. But the biggest problem with a TRX for me is not the price tag, it's the fact that it's on a half ton frame, chassis, whatever you want to call it. It is not designed for what I'm trying to use it for. What I need is a three quarter ton or bigger. Really a three quarter ton is perfect for the little trailer and the little cars that I haul. It does absolutely great. A half ton, however, it, it, especially like a Raptor, or a TRX. Guys, as soon as you throw some weight on it, man, that thing's just gonna, it's, I don't care how much horsepower you got under the hood, if your truck's not designed for what you're doing, well, you're just doing it wrong. So if there was a perfect truck for me, it would probably be this truck with a Hellcat engine. Unfortunately, as far as I know, they don't make that combination, which is crazy because they make everything with Hellcat engines, but I don't think they make a power wagon with a Hellcat engine. If I'm wrong, drop a comment below. Definitely let me know. But for now, I think we are very lucky to have this power wagon, especially considering we went to the dealership looking for a Rebel. And while the Rebel's an awesome truck, we run into the same problem I mentioned earlier. It's a half ton truck. So the fact that they had just taken this on trade it worked out great for everybody involved. If you're wondering what I paid for it, if I didn't tell you already, I paid 71, which is more than the truck cost when it was new. Welcome to the new age of uh, car appreciation. I don't know how long that bubble is gonna last for, but for now, cars are still going up in value, particularly trucks. Now there are some advantages with getting a used vehicle. Number one, you typically aren't going to pay as much as you would if you went to buy a brand new one. If you've seen the markup on new cars lately, it is insane. Next, they certified this truck. And according to them, that ups the warranty from the original five-year 60 to five-year 100,000 miles. That's what I was told. And if that is accurate, holy crap, that's a hell of a deal. It's a free extended warranty, basically. Another good thing about buying used vehicles is there's gonna be some pre-existing damage. There's gonna be some scrapes, scratches, maybe a few dings here and there. Well, when you buy something that's already got a little bit of damage, I'm not talking like smashed or anything, but with some damage, 
you don't feel so bad when you get that first scratch. In fact, sometimes you won't even notice that first scratch. Or if your, your watch with the metal band scrapes up against the console or something, leaves a scrape in the leather, you're not sitting there punching yourself in the face over it because it's already used and it's already got some scrapes and scratches, some nicks and bruises. It, it makes it a lot easier when you buy it already that way at least for me. It makes me feel better about it when I accidentally damage it. Now to end this video, I'm going to tell you my experience with that Toyota Tacoma was absolutely terrible. And it seems like by saying that I have pissed off a slew of people who absolutely love Toyota. Here's the issue that I've seen, all right? As soon as I posted that I got rid of the Toyota and traded it in for a Ram, the comments started flooding in about how I traded a superb, a quality built vehicle, a vehicle that's going to run for 500,000 miles for a piece of crap Fiat. Well, Dodge Ram whatever is not Fiat, it's Stellantis now, so that's wrong. At least get your facts right. Um, next, I don't care how long a vehicle is going to run, if it sucks, okay? That's, like, I, I hope some people can understand that. If the vehicle that you're driving just sucks, I don't care if it's gonna run for 500,000 miles. I don't want to drive a vehicle that sucks 500,000 miles. I understand the Toyota Tacoma is a small truck. I'm used to big trucks, all right? I'm used to V8 engines. The Tacoma was a little SR5 two-wheel drive V6. My issue is not that it's a V6. My issue is not that it's a little truck. My issue is it seemed like something <coughs> was wrong with it. Now I've done a lot of reading on that truck and it seems like a lot of people experience the same thing. Major, major delay when you hit the gas pedal to really get going. Like if you need to pass somebody or merge onto the highway, when you hit that gas pedal, that truck should take off. I don't care if it's a four cylinder, six cylinder, eight, 10 or 12, it doesn't matter. When you hit the gas, it should go unless it's turbocharged, in which case you might experience some turbo lag. I'm telling you that truck is not turbocharged. It is not forced induction. When you smash the gas to go to get around somebody, to get out of the way of something and emerge onto the highway, that Tacoma took two seconds, one Mississippi, two, from the time you smash the gas till the time the transmission downshifted into passing gear so that you could get going. The power was absolutely pathetic in that truck. Again, little truck, little V6, I guess I understand that, just felt very, very lethargic to me. Now, I bought that truck for my fiance and she drove it. And after driving it for a while, she too hated it because it was so, I don't wanna say it was unpredictable, but in your mind, you think hit the gas and go. She never got adjusted to having to plan two seconds ahead of time. And sometimes in traffic, you don't have two seconds to plan your next move, okay? So she got really, really aggravated with that hitting the gas and it not going. I took it out for rides and I experienced the exact same thing and I agreed with her. I hated it too, but it wasn't my truck. She loved the design. She liked the interior. The ride quality was okay. The problem we ran into with that is on these bumpy back roads, 55, 60 miles an hour, the back end wanted to fishtail out from under you. You hit these bumps and the thing would just, it would just, it would just start, you could feel the back end trying to come out. So you'd have to slow it down. You know, maybe that's just the nature of a small truck. I don't know, but it didn't feel normal to me. She ended up she ended up being afraid to drive that truck because the back end might come out of it or she might get in a wreck because she hits the gas and the truck doesn't go. So ultimately, when I went to get my new truck, I asked her, "Do you want your truck? Because if you don't, we might as well just offload it now. Let's get rid of it now while we have the opportunity." But I also told her, "If you want to keep it, it's your truck. Keep it. It makes no difference to me one way or the other because I'm not the one that's going to drive it." She didn't even hesitate. She was like, get rid of that POS. Yeah, well, that's gonna piss off a lot of Toyota fans. And it's funny, the Toyota community that's been complaining about me calling it a POS are the ones that don't even own a Tacoma. There are a lot of 
Corolla and Camry owners out there that have been leaving massive, I'm talking three, four paragraph comments saying, Toyota's the best truck. I've got a Camry. I've got a Corolla and I've driven it 480,000 miles and it's never needed anything. Still on the original brakes. Even the tires are still original. Yeah, no, no, no. Come on. And here's another thing. Your 97 Corolla or your 97 Camry, as good of a car as it might really be, I'm sure it is. Let's just be real here. You're talking about a 2021 Toyota Tacoma. We had 5,000 miles on. It's a brand new truck. This is a brand new truck. Your Camry or Corolla is not a Tacoma. It's not even the same generation. In fact, it's not even within like two generations of what this truck is. So you cannot compare apples to, to cinder blocks. All right. It doesn't work that way. You would have to compare a Tacoma from my generation with a Tacoma of my generation. You just, you cannot compare something from 97 and a car to a brand new pickup truck. It, it makes no sense. I'm telling you from my experience and my fiance's experience that Toyota Tacoma, it may be reliable. I don't know, but it's absolutely junk in my opinion. Now there's going to be those of you out there that are really upset about that. And I'm sorry if that offends you, I guess. Why am I apologizing? If you're offended, that's not my problem. That's your problem. All right. Me, I've got a thing for these Rams. I love these Rams. And sure, Rams have problems too. All vehicles do. But I can tell you this. When you hit the gas on the Ram, guess what it does? It goes real fast. It gone. Uh, hitting bumpy roads at 55, 60 miles an hour. Nope. Never feels like the back end is going to come out from under me. Never fishtails around. It holds the road very well. And at the end of the day, it's got a warranty. So if anything goes wrong, you can always send it back to the dealer, get a loaner car, and let them fix it on their dime. It's a great deal. And at the end of the day, it's my money and it's my decision. And while I didn't want to spend this kind of money on a truck, I did. And in two weeks, I'll probably sell it. The last question that I've gotten from you guys, what about the new Ram that I built? Am I still taking possession of it? Am I still going to take delivery of it when it comes in? The short and quick answer is no. The longer answer is maybe. Probably not though. I, I don't really see why I would buy that truck when I already have this one. That one I custom built the way I wanted it. But at the end of the day, it's even more money than this one. And if this one can handle everything that I want to do with it, I just don't see the point in going through this all over again. Now, with all that said, I've got some plans for this truck. Hopefully this summer, I can take you guys to go do some fun stuff. I'm thinking of going to Branson, Missouri. I'm thinking of going to Moab as well. I've, I have always wanted to just ride through the trails out at Moab. That, I mean, honest to God, I've always wanted to. I'm not talking about like extreme rock crawling or extreme mudding, but this truck is so capable, so capable of handling most trails that people are gonna go through. And I think it'd be a lot of fun for me to go out there and just do something fun for myself. But of course it wouldn't make sense if I didn't bring you guys with me. So I'm gonna try to go do some stuff. Maybe we'll go to Florida this summer as well. I'm thinking about uh, taking a, a like a one week vacation or something down in Orlando sometime during the summer. We're also gonna be doing the uh, Hot Rod Power Tour. I got a lot of stuff planned this year and I'm really excited to bring you the new content and I hope that you want it join with me and do the Moab thing and, you know, do a little bit of trailing and off-roading and have a little bit of fun because it can't all be about Copart walk-arounds and fixing crappy cars. Sometimes we just need to go out and enjoy the fruits of our labor. So I look forward to bringing you guys with me for all the stuff I plan on doing this summer. If you are excited to do it with me, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. As usual, drop your comments below. I know I pissed off a lot of Toyota fans out there and that's okay. Um, we can have a difference of opinion and I think we can still live in harmony with one another. I don't know today. It's a different day and age now. You know, if you disagree on a brand of car, 
well, the world might come to an end. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get out of here. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. That way you can stay up to date for all the latest and greatest stuff we're going to be out doing over the summer. Till next time, stay safe out there, buddy. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.